Hi there everyone, Steve here with you. The date today is March 16th, 2021. Y'all know what that means. New day, new video. But before we get to that, just want to remind you, remember to like, share, subscribe, hit up my Patreon if you want to help me out there. I'm always posting new stuff there. Help my little channel grow. Help it grow! And the link to my Patreon is in the description below, as well as the links to my Instagram and Facebook pages closely related to the content that I am producing here as well. So all that said, it's a short story, but it was definitely an interesting one. Anyway, let's get to it. I swear I just heard some thunder. I haven't heard that in a while. Ugh. Gotta get out of here. Maybe at some point. So today's story takes us back to 1943. Now those of you, maybe some of you younger, younger folks won't recognize the name, but this guy was a Hollywood uh, mainstay for practically his whole life. I mean, he was a child actor. He was still acting in some things uh, in his very later years. But the man I'm talking about is Mickey Rooney, who was a you know, big star back in the 30s, 40s, uh, 50s. Um, I remember him more than anything as being the drunk guy from Pete's Dragon. <laughs> Not the, the newer one, but the 70s one. And uh, those of you young, young folks, if you ever watched The Night at the Museum, and there's all the old, the like elderly guards, the really short, bald guy, the one that's like, he looks like a weirdy, that was Mickey Rooney. And Mickey Rooney had, um, you know, there's, there's, there's been lots of claims um, that he, uh, he was kind of a problematic guy. Um, throughout a good portion of his life. However, I, um, I listened to an interview done by um, the guy that does uh, Dearly Departed. Go subscribe to Dearly Departed. I think it's Dearly Departed Online. That guy, Scott Michaels is his name. Um, and the way that he does content, he did a, um, a documentary about the Manson uh, family and... Uh, that guy was literally an inspiration for me starting to do content here. Him, guys like Dan Bell, Adam the Woo, other YouTubers. But anyway, um, Scott Michaels did an interview with a relative of Mickey Rooney uh, discussing the fact that in his you know later years, his final years, Mickey Rooney was horribly uh, mistreated by uh, other members of his family. So... Uh, he, he died a few years ago. He, he was he was up there. He lived a long time. But again, he was he was a big deal in the 30s and 40s and into the 50s. And I found this little this little article. Oh, I think it's just some machinery. I'm like every sound I hear coming from the sky. I'm like, oh god, the thunder and lightning is coming. Anyway, so right at the peak of his popularity. Mickey Rooney uh, apparently wanted to do what a lot of other, a lot of big Hollywood names disappeared for a couple of years because they were fighting in World War II. Um, I, um, Clark Gable did, I wanna say uh, Gary Cooper did. I know there's a lot of them and I'm gonna forget some of them. But yeah, a lot of big name actors went and fought in the war effort. You know, everybody was behind uh, our effort in World War II once we finally got involved. And Mickey Rooney wanted to, as it appears, uh, get involved in that as well. And it's, it's, it's so sad. I, I can just see the judgmentalism being passed. Because Mickey Rooney was this very short, stout guy. He wasn't you know, Gregory Peck or, you know, uh, William Holden, these, these tall, built, beautiful men. I could just see the way that this thing was going down. 
anyway so he he went to get you know checked up and all that stuff so that he could join our boys in the army during ww2 simply put the title of this little piece was mickey rooney rejected by army and it's just it's so sad it's abundantly clear based on the judge the judgmentalism and the prejudices of the time, some of which still exist with many people today, but how you look is everything. And if you don't look the part, then you're not gonna fit. And here was little short stout Mickey Rooney, and he wasn't good enough to make the cut, so it seems. So yeah, the, the article refers to him as like a poor physical specimen. Like he's some animal they're operating on in like a biology lab. This is not a good specimen. And the article concludes by expressing that a doctor, like, thumped his chest. And through that doctoral examination, if you can call it that, he determined that Mickey Rooney had high blood pressure. He had high blood pressure from a little flick to the chest. And then the neighborhood gets rough. This street is all jacked up there's just like this one beat up house this is the parts of portland they don't want you to see and apparently the u.s army didn't want to see mickey rooney in action but i still i can't i can't you know it just so many of these old school archaic methods that were used by doctors to determine stuff and even by the 30s and it seems like it was all it was all a gimmick it's, it's also referenced in the piece that, you know, movie makers were elated by this. You know, the, the movie, you know, obviously, you know, you're, the, you're, you're Americans, you may be filmmakers, but you're Americans, you need to support the war effort, but you don't want to be losing all your money making stars to the effort. So anyone that was rejected, it was like, woohoo, you know, behind closed doors. So they were elated. And something tells me that there's probably a little bit more to this story than meets the eye, because obviously no real actual medical, or at least legit medical examination was done in this case. At least if there was, there was no actual reference to it. It's just a thick, or a thick, a flick to the chest. And uh, well, you don't look like a very good specimen. And that was what they used to deny him uh, being in the army. And who, who knows how much of an effect this maybe had on Mickey Rooney, how badly he really wanted to go, how bad he felt that he wasn't able to. I mean, but if he wanted to try and they were just going to deny him, then what more can you do? But it seems to me like this is probably, this is probably already kind of a done deal. They were like, come on, look at Mickey. Look at him. He's all short. Don't, don't send him into the army. He won't, he won't last. And then what are we going to do in America when the, when the great Mickey Rooney dies in a battle that he never should have been in in the first place, you know? I don't, I don't know. I don't know that's how movie guys were in the 30s, but... I get the vibes from the article that there was an objective that he was going to go in and everyone kind of agreed ahead of time, we're going to reject him so that at least we have one more leading man that's still around to make movies for us while all these other guys are actually going overseas and fighting. Getting ready to go to the store. Uh, so what do you think? I think, it, I think the whole thing was a farce probably to keep one of Hollywood's golden boys sticking around during the war effort uh you know it, it's a wonder you know when you look at stuff like that you wonder what would have happened if history went the other way what if he ended up passing his physical what if he ended up being a decent soldier but mickey rudy ended up like dying overseas during the war effort and all the work that he was in afterwards like wouldn't it's not that it wouldn't exist it just it wouldn't exist without him being a part of it you know, that's, that's the effect that, you know, uh, films have on us is like, you wonder sometimes if you hear a story about a big celebrity who escaped a brush with death, what if they didn't? And all these things that they did afterwards, they just wouldn't be what they are. You know, I, I'm a firm believer in that we're all people and we all deserve to be treated the same way and that celebrities don't deserve to be treated better than anybody, but still, they, they affect your life, you know? So, I wonder, store run done, nice and quick, and it looks like I avoided 
a very serious rainstorm. So lucky me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Remember, as always, to like, share, subscribe, hit up my Patreon. All those little method methods that help a small channel grow. The link to my the link to my Patreon is in the description below, as well as the links to my Instagram and Facebook pages closely related to the content I do here and on my other channel, Steve the Amateur Historian. And from one of the deadest malls in the world, this has been Steve, and I'll catch you later.